has there ever been a time when you wish you could meet a hero or a heroine or a person that's important from your past? In my life, I have always wanted to meet Ogden Nash. He is one of the many poets that I hold dear from my childhood. Unlike Edna St. Vincent Millay or Emily Dickinson, he was funny in a serious way. And for those of you who don't know, Nash was a great poet, or know by now, whose blend of satire and fun enticed my young mind. Nash was born in Rye, New York in 1902, and he died not far away in Baltimore, Maryland in 1971. And in between his birth and his death, he wrote great poetry. His love of rhyme and pun led to speaking engagements and to lectures. He wrote plays and musicals, but his first love was poems. One of the reasons I love him is that I love poetry. I found him when I found my voice, when I started writing poetry at 13 years of age. And throughout his life, Nash loved rhyme, which I'm not always very good at. But if I could, I would ask, ask Nash, why poems? Well, you can. Oh, there you are. Me. <laughs> I think in terms of rhyme, and I have since I was six years old, I have a fondness for crafting my own words wherever rhyming words did not exist. Though admitting that crafting rhymes was not always the easiest task, I believe there is a beauty to cadence and tone. The measure of a good poem is what it makes the heart feel. The words are secondary to the experience poems give you, and the thoughts that they open. Poets often say that what we do with words is to describe something that words can't describe. It is a way to reach into the heart. It touches the part of us that can be dormant or hidden. Carl Sandburg said, poetry is the journal of a sea animal on living land wanting to fly in the air. <laughs> poetry is a mystery. It is a feeling from the gut and a longing beyond all logic. Nonetheless, when you, you hear it, when you hear it, you know. In my poem, Morning Prayer, I say, now another day is breaking. Sleep was sweet and so is waking. Dear Lord, I promised you last night never again to sulk or fight. Such vows are easier to keep when a child is sound asleep. <laughs> Today, O oh Lord, for your dear sake, I'll try to keep them when awake. One of my favorite visuals of poetry writing comes from Emily Dickinson. She says, if I feel physically as if the top of my head comes off, I know that is poetry. I know that when I write poems, the words are spilling out from somewhere deep inside me, often when my emotions are running high. I have to say, I have never been brave enough to make up words like Ogden. I think it would take a certain kind of description of ideas and emotions to be able to pull that off. I love how Ogden uses rhyme in a sing-song style to invoke the longings of a child. We are all contrite and wish that we were good. And we wish to forget our badness in the hustle and bustle of the day's activities. We know that feeling he's invoking in the poem. And we all need, we all need from poetry that feeling that moves in our hearts. But if Nash were in front of me, I might ask him a second question. 
Why is humor in poetry important? You know I'm still here. Oh. <laughs> humor allows us to say things we can't say in places where we otherwise couldn't say them. For there to be humor, there has to be its counterpoint, sadness and loss. Humor lightens the burden of a full life. And nonetheless, at first in my early career, I tried to write in the style of 18th century romantic poets a serious verse. And to tell you the truth, I wasn't very good at it. I don't believe that. <laughs> but I preferred in my early days to write poems on scraps of paper and toss them around the office to co-workers and this led me and a friend named Joseph Alger to work together to produce in 1925 a children's book called The Cricket of Carador. In humor I could say serious things, I could talk about sin and make people laugh, I could talk about death and loss and human deficiency and corruption and people would listen to the things I said and think about them. It's hard to be angry when you are laughing. In the book, The Body Keeps Score, Bessel von der Kolt writes about the art healing the mind and the spirits of people who have experienced trauma. I learned that there are camps where kids go to read Shakespeare instead of going to juvenile jail. Reading poetry and drama is one way we can integrate events and emotions. This helps us rewire our brains. The embodiment of ideas is healing. I wonder if Nash understood this in the poem on sin or in the reflection on the fallibility of the nemesis. He who is ridden by consciousness worries about a lot of nonsense. He without benefit of scruples, his fun and income soon quadruples. I can harvest poems when I explore the ways that humans cause and experience pain. Yet there is a space too close to tragedy where humor cannot land, and a space too far away where things aren't tragic enough to be funny. Finding that space is magic, and it's where I've strived to live most of my life. Nevertheless, where there is a monster, there is a miracle. It is in our fallibility that we find grace, and in my life, I have experienced the grace that comes from living and writing well. Ogden Nash wrote over 20 books of poetry. In later years, he wrote mostly children's poems and delighted in spending time with his grand babies. One poem goes like this. I didn't go to church today. I trust the Lord to understand. The surf was swirling blue and white, the children swirling in the sand. He knows, he knows how brief my stay, how brief this spell of summer weather. He knows when I am said and done, we'll have plenty of time together. <laughs> the truth is, poets aren't very useful because we aren't consumeful or very productive. Poems capture moments in time. On a bright sunny day when we as a family skipped church to go to the beach, that poem was there. And when you hear the words or read them on the page, you know that feeling, the feeling of the water and the waves and of children running around and digging in the sand. In those words, you know God's forgiveness for a day at the beach with our family instead of a day between the four walls of a church building. I want people to explore their understandings of a relationship with God. I believe in wiggle room in what is acceptable religious behavior, and I can say it in eight short lines of poetry. <laughs> On a day like today, in a gathering of people such as yourselves, we have explored sin and prayer and death and forgiveness, and we've done it all with poems and song. This is the power of humor, the grace within rhyme. And so I invite you on this rainy day to find a poet and enter into their world. Thank you, Ogden. Well, you're quite welcome, Kimberly. <laughs>